Hello, my friends. Welcome in. Hope everybody's doing okay. It's Tuesday. It's going to be a two for a day. Bitcoin Daily is first. And right now we're going to talk about war de-risking that's going on and why the ETFs have not been playing the way they normally play. And we're going to break all that down as well as some interesting on-chain action that's happening and where we are overall in the cycle with just three days to go pretty madness when you consider it now the crypto market cap has lost half a trillion dollars in the last month volume is high 115 billion we like that fear and greed 65 and dominance for bitcoin is 54 percent we're going to talk about everything regarding bitcoin today the most comprehensive Bitcoin Daily you'll ever find. And a shout out as well to Patreon who make all this possible. From TFT Wood and Homestead says, just join Patreon. There's some amazing information there. Well, thank you for joining. Yes, <laughs> ton of stuff. Anyway, Bitcoin only played us will be here after. And we only have three days to go. Three days. And people are freaking out. Uh, because Bitcoin's at $62,000. By the way, it's exactly where it was on Saturday. It's exactly where it was yesterday. <laughs> it's exactly where it is today. There's weird stuff going on behind the scenes, and people are now really, really anxious. Again, we're $20,000 higher than my bull case of 42k at the halving. But there's some interesting things happening behind the scenes. We'll break that down. First of all, somebody from Vivek here, somebody just bought half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin on Coinbase seven minutes ago. Okay? So while retail are scared, and hiding and freaking out and selling because they think they can buy in at 40,000. Somebody is grabbing their bag and they're not grabbing it for short term speculation. Another crazy news as well. There's a lot of things. Uh, this is from James Seifert. And thank you, Sir Winston, as well. I was deeply concerned. I could not believe the volumes for all of these ETFs and zero edition of Bitcoin. I'm like, huh? What's going on? Well, I don't know if this is the answer, but per James here, the other James, too many questions about his ETFs and zero flows. On any given day, the vast majority of ETFs will have a flow number of zero. That's very normal. And there are th three and a half thousand ETFs in the US. And yesterday, 2,903 of them had a flow of exactly zero. So when you see things like that, you ask yourself, why? Why? Why no flows? Well, part of it is this. This is what I call war de-risking in one image. Bitcoin demand has slowed significantly from both ETFs and other permanent holders. And investors are waiting for the halving to pass or are they waiting to make sure there's no World War III? I don't know. I do think the war nerves out of Iran have a lot to do with it, unfortunately. And we all, again, pray for peace. I do not like any type of war ever. I think it's ridiculous in this day and age that like men are killing men and women are killing women. I don't know. How. <sighs> Another view of the stalling here from the root. Many ETF flows stalled due to, again, the fear of war. Meanwhile, however, BlackRock, 65 days of consecutive inflows into these puppies. BlackRock is holding the ETF candle for everybody and stemming the bleed from out of grayscale. This is the last week as of today. You know, over a day we did lose 37 million. I'll break all that down. But over the week, we're still up a positive 105 million. And again, somebody just bought half a billion on Coinbase. Half a billion dollars. That's not a retail investor. Okay, that's somebody big. Somebody knows what happens after the halving. Now, another interesting news too. Speaking of the halving... <laughs> Grayscale has been halved. Pretty much. Literally, they've lost half their bag in 65 trading days. <laughs> the half the GBTC happening before the happening. Sometimes I I like to play with words, so excuse my vernacular. But that is bonkers. Again, they started with 621,000. 310 are gone. Pumph. Disappeared. And now a <laughs> shout out as well to Exahashes. GBTC is now under $20 billion AUM. That thing is being flushed fast. But as I say, no more than 100,000 more Bitcoin to go. 
because I'd say a third of it is probably people with long-term capital gains that are not tax efficient. Therefore, they probably have to hold at least till the top of the bull market. Then it'll go away. But by then, maybe Grayscale would change things. Anyway, who cares? Um, in addition, by the way, not just somebody on Coinbase buying half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, but Mr. 100 has bought 1,600 Bitcoin since Sunday. They just bought 200 more this morning. That is absolutely crazy. Remember, 1,600 Bitcoin in three days will be nearly, f uh, in terms of, that'll be more than the daily issuance in three days from the halving, okay? 450 a day, well more than that. Mr. 100, whatever sovereign that is, wherever in the Middle East, the war does not scare them. But they do like to buy the dip, and they've gotten really, really good at buying the dip. And they know 62K is a good price to buy. Now, in other news too, uh, this was a piece from Bybit, Bybit Research. Don't know how good they are, but there's only 2 million Bitcoin left on exchanges. And if we assume a daily inflow of 500 million to Bitcoin spot ETFs, the equivalent of around 7,142 Bitcoin will leave the exchanges daily, suggesting that it will only take nine months to consume all of the remaining reserves. Now, this goal kind of leads to supply crunch. And yes, if you take out the grayscale dumpage, it is half a billion a day, which is huge. And there's more ETFs coming from all over the world. But the crazy thing too, is there are people that do not trust self-custody. They have their Bitcoin on an exchange and they have no intention to sell it. So even though there might be 2 million Bitcoin on exchanges, it doesn't mean they are for sale. Yeah, they will be for sale. Again, everybody has their price. What that price is, I don't know. Is it 100,000? Is it 250,000? Is it the house on the beach or the house by the lake or the house in Italy that you can buy for 100 euros? In some areas, by the way, it's kind of crazy to see. But you've got to renovate it. And that could cost a lot of money too. Or is it a million dollars? We don't know. But again, this 2 million on exchanges is not all for sale. That's for sure. And eventually it will be at a certain price. Now, shout out to Uncle Fred. <laughs> this is Fred Krueger on Twitter. A big believer in the power wall. And uh, he asks, is Bitcoin working? The answer is yes. Just take one look at the graph here. He created the number of people who own at least 1,000 US dollars value of Bitcoin is growing exponentially. You can't see it as an exponential growth because it's a log of the number of holders. Okay, but the point is, it's raising the number to the fifth power over time with 98% accuracy in this trend. And this power law appears to be working very, very well. And we like to see a wider dispersion of Bitcoin as well. So the larger the number of $1,000 holders, the more people will be saved by this beautiful miracle that is Bitcoin. Now, uh, shout out to the Bitcoin therapist. This message is kind of interesting. And uh, this message suggests that if you if you think Bitcoin's value will eventually be worth over a million dollars per coin, then the money you earn today could be much more valuable in the future if you park it in Bitcoin. For example, if you earn $10 an hour at your job, but you take that 10 bucks and you put it into Bitcoin and you wait, that $10 will be worth $200 in the future. Essentially saying your earnings could multiply significantly if you park your money in Bitcoin and not fiat. Again, based on expectations of growth. By the way, if you take Kathy Woods's $3.8 million target for 2030, it's a lot more than 20x in your money today, considering the price of Bitcoin currently, as I speak, is 62200 Well done, everybody. Bitcoin's got up 200 bucks since I started, so bring that good juju. Now... This is the calm before the storm. Check this out. This is from Eric Balchunas. Updated look at the holders of IBIT. By the way, IBIT is the BlackRock ETF, the 800 pound gorilla. There's 30 of them so far, and they only account for 0.2% of the shares, which means this is the tippy tip tip of the iceberg. In context, Beto, 42% of shares reported via 13F. Beto has been around a lot longer than iBit. iBit has only been in play for 65 trading days, and I did promise you the institutions are coming. But it shows you what they've done is they have nibbled, as evidenced by the tiny percentage numbers, nibbled institutions have only bought 
0.2% of this bag. And they're coming hard. Okay, the rest is retails. Normies like us. So, hi, Normies. Good to see everybody here. Thank you as well to the mods in the chat, TND Taza and K8 and everybody else. Now, a little bit of perspective of the drawdowns. I know people freak out, but boy, when you compare the drawdowns of this cycle compared to the last cycles, it's a nothing burger. So if you look at all the X's, they are the big, heavy drawdowns to the tune of north of 10%. We had so many more of them and far, far deeper, much deeper cuts. And again, there is a little bit of profit taking out there, but the drops are very mild compared to historic pullbacks, suggesting the euphoria phase might be very early in a cycle per glass note. So that means we have a long way to go. But also, I believe the constant bid from the ETFs is keeping these drawdowns at a minimum and the constant bid from whoever just bought half a billion of Bitcoin and Mr. 100. OK, the question is, are you smarter than those people dropping billions? Ask yourself that. OK, if you are buying at the same time that somebody just bought half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, you're probably not making a mistake. Not financial advice. Now, this is a cool little survey that popped in from uh, KPMG. And I did a detailed post on this on Patreon, but I had some stunning data in it. First of all, big numbers. So half of respondents invest more than 20% of their total assets. And by the way, this is for Switzerland, Germany, and Austria only, German-speaking countries. But... 2,400 private crypto investors, it blew me away because normally the Germans are very conservative with how they throw money around, but it shows you they have this urgent need for alpha. But half of these respondents invested more than 20% of their total assets in crypto. Okay, and that is absolutely bonkers. That's 54% of them. And they also, this is really crazy, they invested more than a quarter of their total assets in assets in total, including real estate and everything else, into crypto. And one in three consider it a much safer place to be than in some other assets as well. And most of the investment that they make is uh, to the tune of about 91% into Bitcoin. So I thought that was very interesting. Times are changing. And this is for Q1 2024 report for the German speaking countries. And the results are astounding. Imagine if you were doing this survey in the Netherlands. KPMG, if you're out there, listen. Do this in the Netherlands. I guarantee you the numbers would be twice as high because the Dutch see the writing on the wall and they know where their life raft is. So shout out to any Dutch people in the audience. Now, let's look at some macro stuff before we get into all the charts. The Dixie. Uh, by the way, the Dixie here is high to low. So it starts at 90, goes to 115 on the right-hand side. This chart is from Jamie Coots, friend of the channel. Hopefully he'll be on the channel soon. We're trying to find a date uh, as soon as our calendar's free up. But remember, Dixie is low to high here. With the higher the Dixie goes, typically it's not good. Let me explain why. Bitcoin's value tends to decrease when the US dollar strengthens. And recently the dollar has gotten super strong, uh, which maybe is impacting Bitcoin a bit, but I think it's other other factors too. When you look at Bitcoin versus gold, gold is widely recognized as a safe asset to invest in during these geopolitical tensions. And Bitcoin, however, has not established itself this way yet. It did during the US banking crisis last year, but not now. And of course, people see things like the government debt, etc., being big pumpers here, but the Dixie will stop its strength soon. And the reason, maybe, I'm not sure, but there's a lot of FX tension out there. Now, the European, this should be EU, not UE, sorry with the typo, uh, basically say they do have some foreign exchange issues. And uh, Lagarde says, ECB will cut rates soon, barring any major surprises from CNBC. And this from Walter Bloomberg. And Sven says, if there are major surprises, we will cut them even sooner. So right now, everything you look at in the whole central bank financial system, FX system, treasury bond system, bond market, it is literally cracks appearing everywhere. They know they got to cut. It's a dead house of cards. And once they cut, they'll start cutting fast. So this could be the point where the... Sorry... <laughs> <laughs> this noise came out of nowhere. It startled me. It's always quiet down here. Uh, 
this could be the point where the ECB breaks with the Fed and do their own thing instead of being in cahoots with each other. Now, final thing, this is kind of an interesting chart too. Jimmy Song shared this and it shows you how hard it is to transport gold. What they are doing is they are disguising gold, melting it down, turning into machine parts and sticking them in machine parts to try and fly them to different places. Kind of hilarious to see. Um, you don't need to smuggle Bitcoin. You can just keep it as numbers in your little head and you're good to go. So it just shows you <laughs> how impractical gold is. Now, some charts. Let's talk about day 65, trading day 65. We are three months into these ETFs. Actually, three months and five days to be precise, but who's counting? I am. But key thing here, the bleed still continues. We've got that orange color back. We had the best day ever, 17.5 million out on the 10th of April. And we're back to north of 110 million now for Grayscale. In terms of BlackRock, they weren't able to stem the tide, but they did pull in 73.4. And by the way, I left all that white stuff blank. So you see that Fidelity did nothing for two days. BTBT, ARC, BTCO, BRRR, EZBC, HODL, BTCW, all zero. And that is the fear. That is the de-risking concern about this war where nobody is spending. What I don't get is the volume is still there, in and out. How come there's got to be like one Bitcoin to buy somewhere? I don't know, weird. Anyway, ETF macro update. This is what it looks like. You can see here, green is grayscale, peaking up, good. BlackRock peaking down a little bit from the big buy they had last Friday. In terms of money flow, negative again, but only slightly negative, you know, 30 million not too bad in terms of money flow you can see the way the volume has really petered out uh, ever since day 46 it has gone and maybe some of this is concern over the bitcoin having maybe it's geopolitical tension maybe it's worry about the macro situation we're not sure by the way bitcoin just shot up 600 bucks since i started we'll take that uh the trend line you can see here it's down we're seeing the slope of that average trend line really break down now, which is not good. But you know what? The best advertising for Bitcoin is price. The halving will drive the price up. If history repeats, probably will, <laughs> especially with the money coming in. Now, the total number of dollars, 36 billion of inflows into the nine new ETFs since we began. And the total amount of Bitcoin, 271,000 Bitcoin now in BlackRock. 152,000 has been flat for uh, Fidelity for a few days, and the rest are kind of there. Um, and 311,650 Bitcoin out of Grayscale. They started with 621. They've been halved in 65 trading days. That is monstrous thing to think about. Over 310,000 Bitcoin flushed, which is fine. We don't care. The dumpage. Let's look at the grayscale dumpage because you know, a lot of people ask, what would be happening here if the speculators weren't dumping the GBTC bags? The answer is we'd be a lot higher. It's that simple. Remember, these people that are dumping are not, I repeat, because people still get confused. They are not retail investors. They're speculators that did the cash and carry trade that took the whole market down 2021. Now, according to this pink line, the actual dump adjuster was $100 million over trend, so we'll take that. It was the 17th least worst day so far. Not bad. And uh, we'll see what happens today. With the having three days away, I would be very nervous if I wasn't stacking a little position right now. Just saying. Could be wrong. Anyway, in terms of the drainage from the system or addition to the system, 576 Bitcoin were added to the system. But don't worry. That's like, oh my God, the dumpage is so high. No, because this fellow, Mr. 100, bought 1,600 of them. They're, they're sucking in way more than the net dumpage from the ETFs. And that doesn't even include whoever this new half a billion dollar purchase was. It's nuts. And remember, this tech companies, not far from where I am here, that have $100 billion in cash. It could be one of those tech companies taking, uh, let's take half of 1% of our cash position or a balance sheet and just throw it at Bitcoin. That could have just happened today. Who knows? We'll find out soon. Bitcoin chart time. Three little charts today. First of all, long-term holder distro. 
This is the uh, from James Van Stratton, Bitcoin market dynamics. The game is between those who've held Bitcoin for a long time and those who've recently bought in. Long-term holders, excluding those in GBTC, have sold 700,000 Bitcoin. Actually, I covered this a couple of days ago, too, in the last four months. But they've slowed their sales significantly in the past 10 days. That's good. I do believe, and I'll jump out here, I've always had this theory after 10 days of the ETS that long-term holders that had self-custody were in a certain situation where they wanted to take that away, stick it in the ETS. Maybe. Could be wrong, but that's my theory. Because a long-term holder that's been holding for, say, more than five years or whatever, they know what Bitcoin is. They've been through worse storms. They're not going to sell before the halving because they know where the price goes after the halving. So... More on this too. Um, the, by the way, the long-term holders are the bluey line. Uh, the black is the Bitcoin price and the pink are the short-term holders. So you can see a big swap -a between long-term and short-term perfectly inversely correlated, which of course it always will be. And the short-term holders are buying more than enough to make up for the selling, which is good too. Now, it's hard to imagine long-term holders continuing to sell as much when prices are in the low 60 thousands. That's when the buyers come in. So we'll see what happens. Also, super whales are buying and stacking hard, buying way more than any of these uh, long-term holders could actually sell. And we'll see what happens as we go forward. It'll be exciting. Now, another good piece of perspective from Equinometrics, penultimate chart of the day. We're almost there, but not quite three days from the halving. But if Bitcoin continues to grow at the same rate as in previous two cycles, we might have seen ranges already at this point in time between $100,000 and $300,000 Bitcoin. The point is diminishing cycles, diminishing returns. We know that. And that has not been the case. But we did have a very promising start to the cycle in 2021, 2022, where it was very far, far high up and to the right. The question is, can we pierce that little blue cloud you see here on the chart, and I think we can. That means we get into the 100K area this cycle. We were very close um, from where we were in the past. Remember, it'll be interesting to see exactly what happens and what the minimum threshold of this model will be as we go forward. Final check-in on the top and bottom indicator. The little blue wick down is the dip from 73,000 to 62,000. And... People are freaking out and are saying, why aren't we at 100,000? Anyway, it doesn't matter. The other thing, the key to note here is the yellow line. That's the top and bottom indicator. We're still kind of neutral. We still got to get to orange, dark orange, and red before we even have to be concerned about hitting a top. So I like to see yellow. I'd love to see a little lime green. That's a heavy stacking zone, but I don't think we're going to get there. That would have to take us to the $42,000, $45,000 level, which I don't see happening. So thank you all for coming. Hit the like if you learned something new today. That's all I ask. Over 6,000 people watching live. Bitcoin is up. Thank you again to the mods in the chat. I'll see you all in a few hours for Okta, where we look at all crypto, all on-chain, all data, all numbers, all macro. And thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye.